We are in Dr. Robert Ballard's. <laughs> we're in the. Uh, okay, we'll get into it. Oh no, this is fine. I have a little sound. Uh, we're in. The, All right, we're taping. All right, we're taping, please. Okay, we are in the the cell of Dr. Robert Ballard here at, uh, and it's nice to know that even the ch the chief, the boss, uh, hasn't got that in much better than we do. Although we're outside, but we get the breeze. Um, just before, we, just as we were going on tape, I did apologize for the fact that we're gonna. I would like to speak to you about the Titanic a little bit, and uh, my first question was going to be, aren't you tired of this? And I think you said it before I said it. Oh yeah, I think. Uh, I mean, it was a wonderful expedition, but uh, I've done a hundred. And ten of them, and I would have to say that it wasn't the most important thing I've ever done. Uh, but I do understand the popular interest in it, and certainly with the movie, yeah, it's rekindled that. So it's it's not a too hard, hard a cross to bear. Right? Uh, did you? How did you feel about the film? I mean, did because uh, they simulated underwater and all that. How did you feel? I, I thought the Titanic itself that was really. I mean, it it, it set up as uh, an exciting. Uh, you know, all the money that was spent, and you could see it was graphically the people running across the deck and it certainly no way it, it showed the scale of the ship I mean it, it seemed tiny even as big as they try to make it I mean what did you feel about the film did you see it oh yeah and I, I saw it a couple times I saw, saw it with Jim Cameron and uh, I, I liked it actually I mean it was uh, two movies it was a love story that could have been uh, acted out on any stage uh, uh, so it was a Romeo and Juliet kind of love story uh, puppy love sort of thing and, and but the, the, I enjoyed it uh, seen their uh, replication of the ship because the ship I saw obviously was the old lady and the movie showed me the young lady so it was you know I thought it was a great movie and enjoyed it and uh, glad they did well it's a uh, it's something with James Dean and Marilyn Monroe all the people that die young and of course Titanic died young and even though it's been found even if they find Amelia Earhart uh, tomorrow if you go out and find her tomorrow her remains or her plane it, it the the legend won't die so you're part of that lore now you're part of that legend you're forever tied to uh, the Titanic uh, legend are you not well that, well that's also true for the discovery of the Bismarck for the discovery of the the Yorktown uh, uh, the other expeditions we've done uh, we're tied to those as well, and and uh, it's 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 not it's not a hardship. Yeah, but Titanic, of course, said this. That's the celebrity. Like Bismarck, of course, is. But Titanic, of course, was the, that captured the imagination. Um, let's talk about post. You know, let's talk about life be, because in 1985 you became known to the world, but prior to that you were making some great discoveries. Uh, but no, hardly you sort of did it in anonymity at that point, and the Titanic made you famous. Uh, to to the public at large. I mean, there were people in your com scientific community that respected you for what you've done, but the public at large didn't know about Dr. Robert Ballin until the Titanic. What about before the Titanic? Uh, talk about that a little bit. Your well, the history. Uh you know, the Titanic was done in 1985, and I began my undersea exploration uh, almost 20 years before that. Uh, certainly, the, our first manned exploration of the Mid-Ocean Ridge in 1975 was a very historic uh, uh, accomplishment to go out and be the first human beings to enter the largest mountain range on Earth. Certainly, our discoveries of the hydrothermal vents and the exotic life forms that live down there that we now think are the origin of life on our planet uh, and that may hold the key to finding life on other planets. Clearly, I'm making a contribution that deals with the origin of life on the planet and the prospect of finding life uh, outside of our planet is far, far more significant. Gotcha. Finding a ship that we knew existed. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would say that those were the real accomplishments. I would certainly say that uh, the work we're now doing in deep sea archaeology, uh, uh, just two summers ago, finding the largest concentration of Roman antiquity ever discovered in the deep sea, mm -hmm. certainly what we're doing with the Jason Project. I would think the Jason Project will probably be my true legacy years out. Right. I was thinking as I was uh, deciding how, what, how would I would approach the interview, I knew that we'd be uh, speaking, and I said to myself, "Okay, Ponce de Leon and Magellan and and all these folks, uh, they went out and find found things that we didn't know existed. Uh, the Titanic we knew existed. So where where would Bob Ballard see his place with the other explorers? But of course, what you're saying now puts you right up there. Where do you see place in history uh, uh, as far as? Uh, of course, you're the modern day explorer now. Where do you see your place in, in history? You you must have a sense of it because you're an explorer. Well, certainly, uh, uh, 
uh, when you say, you know, who do you want to be compared to, and and uh, I am an explorer, and I want to be compared to explorers. My my heroes were uh, uh, Sir Ernest Shackleton, Captain Cook, Lewis and Clark, Marco Polo. Uh, these are the people that really were uh, uh, the biographies I studied and the types of people I wanted to emulate. Uh, so I just hope that someday uh, I may get, be on that list. Sure. Uh, one of the last two questions I'll ask about the Titanic is a child growing up. Uh, what about your childhood? Uh, I talked about a, a young boy that wants the, uh, your autograph because he's mesmerized by the t Titanic. What was your childhood like? Did you? Uh, what were your dreams? Uh, did you think Titanic back then? No, I didn't think Titanic at all. My uh, idol was Captain Nemo. Uh, I wanted to be Captain Nemo. I read 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea and I fantasized as a, as a small child being an undersea explorer and uh, actually Titanic really never entered my mind until very, very late in life and in fact uh, Walter Lord's book, A Night to Remember, uh, and certainly some of those movies, uh, I was aware of them, but I didn't really get involved in thinking hard about the Titanic until we uh, began to develop a ca diving capability that could reach 12,000 feet. And once that took place, which was in the uh, 70s, then I realized that we had the technology that could find the Titanic, and then it became something of interest to me. I always thought it was a little strange that people, the survivors, knew where the ship went down. Uh, the California knew, I mean, not exactly, but they knew about where, how far could it have traveled uh, when it when it landed on the ocean floor but it didn't occur to me that location wasn't the problem depth was the problem and until the technology there was no way to find it well not only that it was also terrain it was a very uh, rugged terrain it was like losing something in the badlands of the Dakotas and and uh, so it isn't flat down there there were deep deep canyons and you could easily hide a ship as grand as the Titanic was uh, hiding a ship like that in the Grand Canyon is a piece of cake so it was the terrain issue, but we also uh, didn't have a very good idea where it was. The search area was pretty sizable, 150 square miles is, is not a small search area. You were quoted as saying, I don't know if this is probably not a direct quote, and I doubt it, um, that you chose not to lay claim to the ship because that is a grave site. And I absolutely agree. I mean, there the are scavengers right now, people digging. I'm waiting for bones to come up at this point, maybe try to bring up the bow or the hull or the... Um, why not this? You decided not to lay claim at that point, Dan, and for what reasons beyond the uh, the, the feeling that you want to leave that pristine, you know, as a grave, uh, graveyard. How do you feel today about that? Are you sorry you didn't uh, take possession of it at that point? And could you have taken possession of it at that point? I could have taken possession, but maritime law uh, that presently exists is arcane. It's written in the 17th century. Uh, it does not have any concept of uh, today or future technology. Uh, my interest was more in leaving the ship and uh, visiting it as it is. Uh, the technology uh, uh, going to the Titanic is very easy uh, and certainly if Jim Cameron can use it as a television prop uh, it's very accessible and so it's more of a thought of uh, treating it like the Arizona in Pearl Harbor uh, that you visit and I think that that will be its ultimate fate. They will never raise it. They'll just finally uh, reach diminishing returns on their uh, picking at it and they'll finally just be become not, well they'll, they'll have to abandon it because it won't be commercially viable to them and then the ship will probably finally end up the way it should end up. Okay, let's move on beyond the, uh, that's it for the Titanic. Uh, let's move along. It's uh, The subject is closed, case closed on that. Uh, the Jason Project, are you a child at heart? Oh, I think uh, all children at heart are scientists and certainly as I was growing up I had a, a, a just a fundamental curiosity. I think a good scientist is a curious person that doesn't have a vested interest in the answer and I, I really have never cared what the answer is. I just want to know what it is uh, and so I think that's what what's makes me a good scientist. I think that's what makes me an explorer. I have an interest in a lot of things and I think that, uh, that, that children are born that way as well.